cookbooks and cookbooks history. They need to claim chapter 11 bankruptcy. Changing formats of accounting every year to keep it complex to understand. And fraudly wrong profit numbers. Welcome to another vlog here at the Wolf of Dubai financial investing channel. Make sure to subscribe if you are new or thumb up the video. You can do anyway if you are new here or subscribed. We have always the financial breaking news on this channel so you will be informed properly and make investment decision on the stock market every single day. So let's dive into today's topic. So today's topic, the giant and very old company General Electric was accused of account fraud by the whistleblower of Bernie Madoff, which was the biggest Ponzi scheme ever on Wall Street. And he's accusing GE of accounting fraud and that they are insolvent and many, many more things that I will tell you about uh, in this video. So make sure you watch it till the end because it's super interesting and maybe it's the biggest short you can do, the big short of 2019. Stay tuned. Let's dive uh, first into the guy who is making these accusations, which is Harry Marco Polos. So Marco Polos, Harry as his first name, he is a very, very known whistleblower from the Wall Street. 2001 and two, he was the very first person that discovered the discrepancies in the accounting of Bernie Madoff, who was the biggest Ponzi fraudster ever uh, with over 60 billion that he could to get from investors and uh, paid the new investors interest with new money that came in and you know kept a lot of profits was super super high in uh, Wall Street and he Harry Marco Polos was the guy who discovered him so big credit uh, he got for that obviously and since then he is a, a forensic fraud uh, accountant specialist and obviously, you know, um, he is not making this only for himself as to trade, but also he made a deal with a hedge fund to make sure that um, he is not trading by himself. But uh, when the hedge fund that actually uh, get in, in contract with Marco Polos will short GE, the profit or part of the profits will go to as uh, compensation to Marco Polos. And moreover, there is a SEC Security Exchange Commission program where he will get also some uh, compensation as well as the Ministry of Justice in the US if the acquisition will become true that actually Harry uh, heavily put on GE uh, just uh, a couple of days ago. So make sure you stay tuned because I went through 175 uh, page report uh, that the team of Marco Polos put together and summarized it uh, in this video for you. Make sure to subscribe to get all the news uh, on the stock market and breaking news such as this. Uh, let's dive into the fraud acquisitions. So first of all, they are going into the profit margin. So the profit margin is obviously uh, something very important for a company. And uh, looking into the statements of GE from 2012 to 2018, the consolidated profit margin was just 1.6%. Now, if we are looking into all business units of, uh, of GE, you will see that some of them have 20.9. The train uh, business unit is very, very good. Transportation one, you know, there are some uh, units, uh, business units that are not so good. But overall, the picture is really great. So they are claiming actually that they have, over this period from 2012 to 2018, 14.7% profit margin and uh, you know this is not what the report or the accounting saying so you see there's the first discrepancies a very big one actually in the profit margins and if we compare it to other ponzi schemes so a very very fraud uh, accounting seem like like Madoff did it. He actually had uh, more than 10% profit margin over the years. So even this GE profit margin over the years 
is much better than one of the Ponzi schemes. So this is already a very first the red flag that you can see and that uh, actually the, the team of Marco Polos discovered and they diving uh, deep inside that. But this is all you need to know. So profit margin, don't end up. Uh, let's go into the very, very big uh, discrepancy in their accounting. And this is the long term care. Okay, so and this category is very important because uh, it's the main category where Marco Polo see the biggest hit that uh, GE is hiding of losses uh, because they was investigating another insurance fraud and they saw that the insurances made a lot, lot of losses and then they saw GE and GE had the insurance business and they didn't make that much losses than the other insurance companies and this made them skeptical so they dived into the GE case and spent seven months of investigating of the accounting of GE and uh, they actually discovered that the insurance business uh, usually have to put a lot of reserves uh, in case you know they have to pay out insurances and especially the long-term care insurance that is like a health care insurance for example for older people you know there as people uh, live older with better medication and service and so on they are discovering that the GE reserves are 52 percent less than the industry standard which is super a red flag obviously you know, this makes a scheme, a pyramid scheme that, you know, will break down like a house of cards. So um, they looked into GE and they calculated that actually they need to put into the reserves 18.5 billion dollars from cash that GE don't has um, into the accounting for reserves of the insurance business and this is really really heavily for GE and um, it's not the first case that uh, GE had to amend the accounting for reserves and uh, they did it 2015 you will see that uh, they put a little bit more than one uh, billion dollars into reserves but 2015 they had to assume that they have to put 15 billion more into the reserves so you see the huge jump you know you had one billion dollars uh, into the reserves for insurances case and suddenly you have to put 15 more this is a huge hit for such a company you know uh, moreover uh, they thinking 18 billion dollars more they have to put to uh, you know to have the stable insurance business especially in the long-term care uh, department so this could break down GE Speaking about history, so the accounting fraud history for GE is actually nothing new. From 1995 to 2004, it was the very first case where people got skeptical because in this period, GE never uh, missed earnings, they never missed revenue expectation and so on. So the numbers were really, really good, even in downturns uh, of business. So people got skeptical and, uh, you know, the ex uh, former CEO, Jack Wells, who wrote a book about, you know, business and his life and so on. He actually admitted in his book that, you know, coming to the earnings period, you know, there was times where, you know, people came to him and said, you know, we can find some ex extra 20, 30, 60 million dollars uh, to put into the book. So you see, you know, account cooking or book cooking, how is the usual term for such a fraud is uh, apparently part of the history of GE, but uh, it came to, or it's, it's, it's getting worse with time because um, the team of Marco Polos claimed that they cannot hold the numbers straight. So even the CEO makes uh, really false statements into uh, the earnings reports and so on. For example, they say the profit margin was 11% while looking in the report, it was 5.73%. So it's not like something like rounding up a number from 5.73% to 6%. No, it's double uh, amount of, uh, of number of percentage number. And this is definitely false claim. I have to also say for Marco Polo's, there's a lot on stake because if the claims are false or misleading or, or wrong, then Marco Polo's um, is really, um, um, 
can even go to jail for that, okay? So this is how serious this is. Um, but let's go for then that because it's getting quite funny. In the annual reports of GE, you see that, for example, the profit margin of 2016 was 18.6%, uh, but the next, uh, next year in the report, looking back at the same year, yeah, just a new, newer report, the um, same position was 13.8%. So, you know, the profit margin was reduced. Same for uh, 2017, uh, it was claimed that uh, there was a profit margin of 7.7% and went down in the 2018 report to 5.6%, you know? So it seems they cannot keep up the numbers and, you know, putting things together and coming to different numbers and changing accounting rules and so on just to, yeah, is it really to uh, cook the books or is it something that uh, is usual for such a big companies? I would also would like to know your comments on that. So make sure uh, while watching or after watching this video to not only subscribe and uh, hit and smash the thumb up button, make also sure to leave a comment to make sure we are discussing this further after this uh, video. Moreover, in the last statement of uh, account fraud history, they are claiming actually that um, the equity in the 2007 period was uh, 81.986 billion, which went down to, um, to 73 billion in the next year report. So the question is really, where does the 8.5 billion dollars goes what does it evaporate or is it just holy smokes or what is it where, where is it going okay guys so this is really interesting and this is you know the case why they are comparing it also to enron which was one of the biggest accounting frauds and they see a lot of same situation in their accounting you know false claims about revenue earnings profit margins and so on changing accounting rules this is they they pretend that this is unprecedented until this case they they say that it's bigger than Enron much bigger than Enron and there's the funny statement that they use they they call it G Enron which is you know uh, for sure <laughs> interesting and another fact I was googling of course a lot about this before making these videos for you guys and I just also discovered it's really really uh, interesting that uh, just uh, um, before release of this uh, report actually end of July 2019 this year it seems that the uh, CFO will leave the company and uh, resigned. So this is always uh, also, you know, in combina combination of this acquisition, a very, very suspicious move. And uh, of course, you know, we stay tuned. Of course, this is very, very interesting. Um, I'm thinking about to maybe uh, pull a position on that. Just, you know, just one to 2% of the portfolio, just to make sure to cover that. It's super fun to watch. Of course, this is not an advice or anything. You have to know, uh, research a bit, make your own research. I hope this helped you to summarize the case uh, because I think it's super interesting. So make sure to follow this channel to get more of that. Thank you for watching. Make sure that uh, to subscribe and to thumb up the video and uh, don't forget the grass is greener on the other side or maybe know how to invest with Danny West. So whatever. I see you tomorrow, daily vlogs. Make sure to stay tuned. Thank you, peace.